uh, we're good to go. So thank you guys for being there and uh, presenting your project, Hypnodux, representing the syndicates. So as I mentioned, a short introduction about yourself, the team, then general overview of the project, and we go deep into the question and all the the thing uh, you have prepared, like in the in the ducks first, I guess. Cool, cool. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, my name's Evan. Uh, I'm one of the founders of Hypnodux. Um, like I said in the beginning, I'm a uh, freshman at the University of uh, South Florida here in Tampa. Um, and, you know, I've kind of had like a pretty, I've always had like an entrepreneurial spirit, um, you know, business and kind of, you know, just like markets in general have really always kind of interested me, mm -hmm. interested, uh, interested me. So, you know, I kind of started like a lot of people did, I think, uh, you know, back in middle school, I was trading, uh, I was like flipping Supreme, flipping sneakers, um, you know, that type of thing. I did that for a little while and then um, I got really into computers and I started uh, building computers um, and uh, I would actually build the computers for uh, people and sell them on, you know, Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, uh, all that type of stuff. Um, and then after that, I got uh, super into the stock market. Okay. Um, I traded in the stock market for about a year and a half. Um, and, you know, it, it was really, you know, both in informational and just fun for me because, you know, I got a really good understanding of how markets work, what makes markets function, you know, all the different variables at play. Um, and, you know, also kind of helped me understand like valuations of companies. Um, you know, I, I got really into it because, you know, I'm a kind of a big finance nerd and like economics nerd, mm -hmm. which, you know, helped us kind of build the uh, the game that we're going to be talking about here in a second. But, you know, the, the stock market really kind of, you know, gave me that initial entrance into markets and, and you know that type of thing um and then as far as crypto goes i knew about crypto uh probably starting in like 2017 um but at the time i was too young to really like take advantage uh of like those opportunities back then but like i remember uh seeing ethereum at like 300 bucks um <laughs> and old times. yeah like yeah yeah good times um but i remember seeing ethereum at like 300 bucks uh, and I just kind of like, you know, the whole like concept of blockchain really kind of fascinated me in terms of just like the whole, it kind of, it takes like the, the internet technology and kind of improves upon it and just kind of, you know, uh, adds on like new layers, um, which I think is really cool. And, you know, I, I'm a firm believer in blockchain, like for future, you know, just for the, just like, you know, as a medium for application, like regardless of whether it's NFTs or however it ends up, you know, becoming a part of our society, I, I, I definitely think, you know, it can solve a lot of problems um, just in the way that, you know, it's it's almost like you can prove you can prove something like guaranteed. Right. And I, I think that's something that is, uh, you know, it, it, the, the transparency of the blockchain as well is another thing that's like, I think, has some some big, you know, uh, potential for the future. Um, but, you know, fast forward to last semester um, when I first got to college i knew about nfts like over the summer a little bit i started like looking into it um like i remember when beep like the whole beeple thing um that's kind of you know where i first heard about it okay and then um you know i kind of i didn't know much i would kind of just look at OpenSea, you know just kind of check it out but then when i met dimitri uh the other co-founder um he was already in nfts uh for a little bit and you know he kind of introduced me to like yeah this is how it works this is what's going on and you know i definitely like had a, you know, that same reaction that a lot of people do when they first hear about NFTs. Like I kind of just laughed at him and I was like, dude, like cut the bullshit here. Cause you know, he was talking about all these insane returns on these mm -hmm. like JPEGs. Yep. And meanwhile, I'm coming from a stock background where it's like, I would have to grind like hard just to get like, even like a 20% day. Right. And this guy's talking about like thousands and thousands of percents, like overnight, um, which for me sounded really absurd, but you know, the more I looked into it and you know, the more I kind of started to understand the value proposition and just kind of like, you know, everything that this technology really offers, the more I kind of started, you know, to really believe in NFTs and honestly really like have a great time with NFTs. Um, so, you know, this was probably back in late August. Uh, so we kind of spent like some time just looking at the market. You know, I, I was looking at buying some NFTs, selling some NFTs. Um, but one thing that I kind of found missing was uh, a lot of utility. Um, now, granted, this was obviously, you know, uh, very like a lot earlier than now um it was you know seven eight months ago now um but you know looking around in the market like i saw you know these the the jpegs with you know x amount of you know valuation but yes. you know other than the community and some early early tokenomics 
like there wasn't a whole lot of utility that was associated. And I remember I would always ask myself this question, like, okay, I spend, you know, thousands of dollars on this JPEG, but like, what can I actually do with it? Right. Like other than, you know, the community aspect and everything like that, like, what can I do? Right. Like what, what warrants like me spending X amount of money on it other than, you know, the fact that it could possibly appreciate in the future. So, you know, going off that, that's kind of what, you know, inspired us to, you know, work, start work on, on our project. You know, I was kind of thinking like, look, like it seems like there's something missing, you know, from the space at the time. Uh, you know, I think there's, there's room for improvement. So, you know, let's, let's get together and let's try to, let's try to make something cool. Um, so, you know, that's kind of where, uh, where we started this project from, but I'll let Dimitri take the stage. How's it going guys? Um, my name is Dimitri. So, um, as you guys probably may already know, because uh, Evan, uh, I am a student at the University of South Florida. So let me just backtrack and kind of explain to you guys how I kind of got here. Mm -hmm. So originally, my first business experience was in high school. Um, and the first thing I really tried doing was uh, dropshipping businesses with some of my friends. Uh, Amazon FBA was to be to be exact. Um, it was around right before COVID hit. And our plan was to make uh, a product it was like so because the main thing with uh drop shipping is basically finding the golden product right and um that people don't know about and it's like has high demand but it's like not saturated and it's like you know what i mean there's not a lot of people selling and shit so we we found a really good product and we were trying to roll it out and this was right before covid it was a it was a mask lanyard right and it was before covid hit so it was like really high in demand and our problem was was because our Amazon restricted it because it thought it was they thought it was restricting their uh, the they had certain requirements about like price gouging, okay. which basically, if you guys don't know, it, it's kind of like, you know what I mean? If let's say you're selling a hand sanitizer bottle. Right. And like, obviously, like if some guy doesn't have like a license or if they're not like. Permitted to like sell that item, they could easily just say, hey, you know what, if you need this, I'm going to sell it to you for $50 or $60. You know what I mean? So that's what it really is. Just kind of a general idea. So they kind of restricted our product from that. And they didn't let us sell it, so it, they we, like it wasted a lot of time, and it's, it got really hard to contact the representatives, things like that. So we kind of wasted like a week and a half or two weeks. Okay. We had everything ready, everything prepared, and then eventually the market got like saturated, things like that. And then fast forward to that, after that happened, after that business happened, um, we uh, I really got into like kind of like uh, Discord, like looking into a lot of like small communities, Discords. That's where I learned. That's where I really got a lot of my information from because I wanted to kind of research and things like drop shipping things like that so i was already in discords eventually i kind of moved towards uh bots bot flipping things like that like flare io uh things like that and um it, it it kind of like i mean i was i was in a small period where i mean it, it, to me I, I didn't really like doing that because of like things like first come first serve it's just like people are using bots to go again it's just basically bot wars right yep. whoever's the fastest things like that and it was just too many people crammed in and there's just too much going on Eventually, after that time period happened, um, I the first this is the first time I ever heard about NFTs, and this was in December, late December, twenty twenty. Um, and I had two options: I had either going the option to go to NBA Top Shot, or I had an option to go like kind of look around like um, Nifty Gateway or OpenSea, things like that. And this is where the biggest mistake happened in in, in my like career with this NFT stuff. I chose NBA Top Shot, so I had a, literally an option when I've been seeing board apes at like five ethereum four ethereum i've been seeing like crypto punks like i've been seeing some of them sell for like seven ethereum eight ethereum things like that and it's like even though that was a lot of money it's like right now it was like a brilliant buy so i went into nba top shot which was a huge mistake i mean i made some profit but not enough mm -hmm. and what's actually kind of funny about this is like i literally like I, I was looking back into chats and i see like me chatting with my brother and talking about crypto punks and we're literally saying in the chat like who the hell is going to buy a pixelated punk? I mean, like, it's going for, like, $7,000 right now. We were just, like, laughing about it. Like, it was just a joke to us. Like, you know when you guys just look at a project and you're like, oh, my God, like, yeah. who the hell is going to buy that shit? And now you're just, just laughing. Months, there. <laughs> exactly. That's what exactly what we were doing. And then now, months down the line, like, after, I, I mean, I was still looking at NFTs, kind of monitoring it, monitoring it, monitoring it. I can't even speak. Sorry about that. <laughs> I've been doing, like, so many AMAs today, guys. But, um... Uh, yeah, so I've been kind of like looking at AMA, like, uh, NFTs, uh, for the past couple months anyways, just kind of monitoring it. And, um, I mean, fast forwarding, like a couple months later, like after I like got into college, I mean, I was still looking at NFTs, buying and selling them. I met Evan, 
What's going on? Okay. So I met Evan and I kind of like explained him how NFTs work, mm-hmm. like with roadmaps, um, what they're what they're kind of doing, but there wasn't really any utility behind it. It was like kind of like I would say late July, August. And so what we were kind of thinking of when we wanted to make a project, it's kind of like we wanted to bring we wanted to bring our own twist to it. Kind of like add more value to their holders and bring utility to it. So and then like after that, a couple months later, like games like Wolf Game came out, things like that. So then that's when utility started to come out. And then it brought us more ideas and more ideas and more ideas. So we just took piece by piece from some projects and then just tried combining it and just putting our own twist to it. Mm-hmm. And it was kind of, it was a couple of months of work. Uh, then we came uh, and in December, we have documents of us coming up, trying to come up with a Genesis collection. Uh, so it's just like every single day we would just like try and like innovate, bring new ideas and then just looking at different projects, analyzing their white papers, seeing how their things, how they're doing things. And we just took, we just kind of took it piece by piece, step by step. And then eventually um, we uh, launched Genesis collection and, um, developed had a plan of developing a game developing a a roadmap a strong roadmap things like that and started reaching out a bunch of projects and we started growing and uh fast forward now we're here uh speaking to you guys about uh what we're gonna offer what what, what's gonna happen with the game and gen 2 and all that all that fun stuff yeah so absolutely um yeah so i can kind of you know run through um a little bit about our game and kind of like you know what we have planned for the future and kind of what what we're about um at hypnoduck so yeah, basically um go. what's up i say yeah we can do that let's go like talking about like the first gen maybe like uh, the supply head like yeah just run that's like through your project yeah absolutely um cool yeah so you know i uh we started me and dimitri kind of started looking at nfts together back in uh late august um and you know we kind of did that for a little while up until like i would say late september um and you know like i said we kind of saw a few things that could be improved upon in this space. And so we kind of just, you know, we were in uh, his room and I, we were just kind of like, all right, well, why don't we, uh, why don't we make a project? Like, let's see how this goes. Mm-hmm. Um, and so this was probably late September. Um, and so, you know, the first thing we did was just take a look at, you know, okay, what are, what are some good projects? What are, you know, what are they doing right? What are they doing wrong? Like wh- what's going on? So, you know, the key thing that we noticed was kind of like the lack of utility at the moment. Um, and so, you know, that's, that's where we really based, based our idea on. Um, so, you know, we started, uh, in September and then kind of worked our, worked our plan, um, up until around December. That's when we launched our discord. Um, and, you know, as far as like that plan, uh, you know, we wanted to do Genesis, a Genesis collection, um, you know, from the start, because, uh, you know, the thing about like FTs that I've kind of noticed sometimes is like the, the, the idea of scaling, which is, you know, a very important business practice in my opinion is kind of sometimes lost because the space moves so fast um so you know i just figured starting with the genesis collection um you know with a low supply it's you know it's a it's a good way to start we get the seed money we need to build you know our ecosystem uh we get to build that close-knit community it's it's going to be a lot easier to manage um you know a smaller community versus you know five ten thousand um and also you know just as new founders we figured you know we didn't want to mint out let's say a 5k 10k collection and then you know have no experience as you know very low experience as founders and kind of you know run into issues of you know where we get overwhelmed with you know thousands of people asking when this when that when when um so when yeah when mint when whitelist when staking when game when game when bread mart so it's kind of like you know we figured the genesis collection would be the best way to kind of you know get started and you know slowly get ourselves into the rhythm of what it what it's like to be a founder how to lead a project you know how to build a community um, and so I think, you know, Genesis worked out super well for us. Um, yeah, I saw like your worship. And yeah, so, yeah, we want Nice flow price. And yeah. And we have like some decent uh, volume and also sales like pretty much every day. So. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and I think we're like less than 10% listed at the moment too. So I think we're like 30 something listed, um, which is super solid. But yeah, so, you know, we went with the, uh, so this was, this was as we were making our plan. Um, and like throughout that time, we grew our team. It started out as just me and Dimitri. Um, but you know, we grew our team to, uh, about 12 people, uh, 13 people now. So we have a dev team of four. Uh, we have three mods, three collab team, a tokenomics, uh, we have an artist, we have an animator. Um, so, you know, it, it's kind of, that, that's the one thing too. Like a lot of these founders, I think sometimes don't give enough credit to the, to their teams. Like I think 
you know, the founders are kind of, you know, responsible for most of the vision, but at the end of the day, like, you know, I, we wouldn't be here without, without our team behind yep. us. So the more you, know, you speed the task and the more successful to be, yeah? you can't handle a single project, yeah, 100%. Uh, just being two or three people. Yeah. 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 Totally. Um, so yeah. So basically like, as far as like what we're building here, um, with the game, um, so essentially, you know, we took some inspiration from, uh, Wolf game, like some, some very minor inspiration. Mm -hmm. Uh, it kind of, you know, seeing Wolf game really got my gears kind of turning, right. It kind of, you know, cause we were, we were searching for what would be like, okay, a good utility. Um, you know, what would, what would I want to invest in? Right. Like if, if I'm looking at this project, like what would really interest me? Um, and I remember when Wolf game came out with their kind of, you know, risky kind of a little bit of strategy game. Um, I kind of wanted to, you know, it was obviously mostly risk, mostly kind of chance um, and low strategy. So I kind of wanted to take that idea of like, you know, the risky area, risky versus safe, and also like implement some strategy uh, to that because, you know, I'm, I'm a huge strategy game guy. Um, you know, I, I think that's like the best games are, 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 you know, easy to understand, but hard to be good at. Like if you think of chess, for example, like, you know, chess has stood the test of time because, mm -hmm. you know, it's easy to understand how it works. You know, you have the pawns move up and down or pawns move up rooks move up and down bishops go side like you know uh diagonally so it's kind of like you know the 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 games that stand the test of time are the ones that are easy to understand and and you know they're, they're still they're hard to get good at because of the strategy um so essentially there's going to be two areas uh there's going to be the safe haven and the back bay um safe haven being you know zero risk but lower yield and back bay being you know the high risk high reward high yield kind of you know area um, so essentially, you know, where this risk comes into play is through, uh, spells and potions. So in the safe haven, there's going to be no spells, no potions, you know, you're going to be completely safe. However, in the back bay, that's where those spells and potions are going to come into play. Um, so essentially these spell, the spells are going to be the offensive items and the uh, potions are going to be the defensive items. Okay. So essentially, um, what these spells are going to do is, uh, they're going to basically, there's three different spells with five different rarities for each. Um, so a total of 15 different spells. And, you know, depending on rarity and what spell you have, uh, it's going to basically steal tokens from other ducks or even potentially steal the actual duck um, with, uh, with the hypnosis spell. Um, so it's it's definitely like some interesting mechanics here. Um, and, you know, the cool thing is uh, with this is, you know, the way you get these spells and potions is uh, out of our bread boxes. So essentially, you know, if you've ever played CSGO or yes. FIFA or anything like that, you know, yes. there's that box pack mechanic where... You know, you, you spend the utility token bread on the box and then you get a random chance to get, you know, a random spell or random potion of, you know, random uh, rarity. And then obviously, you know, the more rare the spell is, the more powerful it's going to be. And same thing for potions. Um, so essentially with our potions, um, you know, potions are going to be the defensive item. And um, these are going to do things like increase your bread production, um, increase your hypnosis counter stock. And, you know, what these hypnosis counters are is it's almost like a defense point. So, okay. you know, the more hypnosis counters you have on your duck, the less kind of intense spells are going to be. You know, it's going to be, it's, think about it like if you have more hypnosis counters, the spells are going to be less severe, right? If you have less hypnosis counters, the spells are going to be more severe. Um, and this mechanic comes into play because uh, the only way you can get these hypnosis, like you can get the hypnosis counters passively in the safe haven, one per day, okay. or you can get them through potions. So, you know, it kind of incentivizes that idea of like, you know, moving back and forth, a safe haven in the back bay, you know, in the safe haven, you kind of prepare for battle and everything like that. And then in the back bay, you have all your spells, you have all your potions, and that's when you go to, you know, get the high yield and, and try to, you know, attack other ducks. Um, so, and then it's the same, same box mechanic for these uh, potions as well. Um, and then as far as our, you know, different collections, that's kind of like an overview of the game. Um, if you want to go to our website to any of you guys in the audience, it's, it's laid out really well there, hypnodocs.com. Um, you know, it, it definitely, when, when you're kind of talking through it, 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 it might sound a little confusing. I don't know, but you know, I, it's one of those things when you're, when you're playing the actual game, like a lot of this is done in the background. So, you know, we, we've spent some serious time working on, you know, user experience, user interface to make it, you know, very intuitive. Um, but essentially, you know, with our Genesis collection, um, obviously, you know, that's going to be the center of our ecosystem and it's really just going to be, you know, the center of our, of our universe. Um, and so, you know, uh, right now, um, you know, in the game, the Genesis is going to have a two times multiplier of token production. Um, so this means they're making twice as much bread, uh, while they're in the safe haven in the back bay, okay. as well as twice as many hypnosis counters in the safe haven. Um, and they also have some super strong abilities in the game. 
Um, and there's three types. So there's going to be the gorillas, the wizards, and the kings. So essentially, uh, with the gorillas, uh, these guys are going to, you know, essentially, there's a, when, when you switch between safe haven and back bay, the two areas, there's a uh, tax associated, right? Mm -hmm. And there's also a minimum staking window. So there's yeah, a minimum staking days, window of right? seven days. Safe haven. Yeah. Yep, seven days. So seven days in the safe haven, seven days in the back bay. So, you know, if you're in the safe haven, you have to wait at least seven days to go to the back bay and same thing. And then essentially when you move between, you know, the, the bread you've accumulated in each area is taxed out. Um, so with the gorilla force, this is going to be the most common genesis. Um, he's going to have a lower staking window. So his staking window goes down to three days, um, which is quite a bit lower. And he's going to completely be able to evade the quack tax. So he's going to pay zero tax and be able to switch back and forth much more quickly. Um, the wizard is uh, going to have two abilities as well. Um, his spells are going to be 50% more effective. So, you know, if you're using a spell, uh, you're going to steal 50% uh, more bread, as well as, you know, if you're using that hypnosis spell, you're going to have a 50% more chance to steal a duck. Um, the king, or sorry, one more ability for the wizard as well. Um, he has a 40% chance to evade spells completely. So, you know, if he gets hit by a spell while he's in the back bay, there's a 40% chance that he's going to completely evade that spell and have no effect. Okay, nice. Um, the king... Yeah, the king um, is going to earn the most bread. He's going to have a four times token production as well as extra quack tax yield. So this quack tax that I'm talking about is actually distributed among, you know, all the ducks in their respective areas. So if you're moving from back bay to safe haven, you know, you get taxed from your bread in the back bay and it gets dispersed to the ducks in the safe haven. Same thing going from safe haven to back bay. So the king is going to get the most of that, you know, allocation. Okay. Um, in addition, Genesis is uh, going to basically have two different opportunities to mint um, Gen 2. So Genesis is going to be able to mint Gen 2 ducks with bread. St we launched staking um, early. We launched the safe haven staking uh, last week. Um, and I think we're up to almost 60% staked right now. Um, but yeah, so essentially, you know, the, uh, the Genesis ducks are going to be accumulating bread early. So they're going to have a head start in the game. Um, and, you know, one of those things too is, they're able to mint Gen 2 ducks with bread. So, you know, if you have, let's say, five Genesis, you're going to be able to mint five Gen 2 ducks with your bread, um, which is basically, you know, a free mint, essentially. Yep. Um, as well as uh, there's going to be a discounted whitelist for uh, Genesis. So, you know, if you have two Genesis, you're going to have, you know, two discounted mints. Um, and uh, let's see. Yeah, so moving on to uh, Gen 2. Um Essentially, you know, this is just going to allow for our community and, and game expansion. You know, you at the end of the day, since we are building a, a game, it's important to expand that player base. Um, and the cool thing about Gen 2 is uh, for the game, we're actually going to be releasing a beta first and then the full game after. Um, so with this beta, we're going to have one week of just Genesis gameplay. So one week of Genesis. And then once that week is up, that's when we mint Gen 2. Um, and then essentially... When we mint Gen 2, Gen 2 is going to be able to hop right in the beta on day one um, and be able to play that for that second week. So we're going to have one week of just Genesis, and then we mint Gen 2, and then one week of Genesis and Gen 2 in the beta. Um, and this is going to be, you know, this is going to allow for a few things. Obviously, you know, making sure the mechanics are all good to go. Um, you know, if we do need to make any changes, the cool thing is with our game, it's a off -ch on chain, off chain hybrid system. Okay. Um, so you know, any game, any gameplay mechanics changes we can do on the fly. Um, also mo like 90% of these in-game interactions that I've been talking about are going to be completely gas free, um, because of that on-chain, off-chain hybrid system, um, which is really cool. But, um, yeah, so essentially, you know, when we minted Genesis, um, you know, we kind of had this ideology of, you know, we want to provide the utility first and then, you know, mint the bigger collection. Um, so obviously, you know, the, the main, the main, uh, utility for now is going to be the game. Um, so, you know, we're looking to provide that, uh, before we actually, you know, mint the Gen 2. Um, this, uh, gen two is also going to be a 5,555 stock and it's going to be made up of four types. Um, there's going to be the normal duck, which is the most common, the Falcon duck, which is, you know, the second most common, uh, the small duck and then the big duck. So big duck being the most rare and then small duck being kind of right in the middle with the Falcon. Um, so essentially these types are also going to have abilities in the game. Um, you know, they're going to be kind of less powerful. They're going to have similar abilities to Genesis, but you know, obviously less powerful. Um, so the normal duck in Gen 2 is going to have no abilities. Um, the Falcon duck is going to have a staking window uh, decrease of two days. So it's going to have a five-day staking window instead of seven. Mm -hmm. uh, the small duck is going to have a 20% chance to evade spells. And the big duck is going to have a 1.5x uh, bread, uh, bread production. Um, and, you know, 
as far as like long term goals, uh, you know, this ecosystem and this game is going to be something that we continue to expand. Um, you know, I'm really big on kind of token utility. Uh, like a lot of times in these play to earn games, like it's it's kind of short lived because you know sometimes what they'll do like for example creeps like no hate on creeps uh, I think it's a great project but you know some one thing one mistake I think they made was you know in terms of actually providing that token liquidity like by releasing those other collections you know as soon as those other collections were minted out, out the token flop or the, the token you know kind of did a knife drop and the you know the collections followed suit so you know I think providing that token liquidity without, you know, just flooding the supply is something that we're looking to do. And, you know, in a couple, we're going to be doing that in a few ways. Uh, the boxes are going to be the big one. Um, we're also going to have uh, what's called the uh, the Bread Mart, which is um, essentially a, a, a shop where we're going to have, um, you know, different NFTs uh, in there. We're going to have whitelist in there um, and, you know, just general like other IRO items and that type of thing. And we're going to be doing a box system for that as well. Yeah. So essentially, you know, you spin the box with your bread. Um, and you have, you know, let's say a chance to get this whitelist, that whitelist, you know, maybe there's a, uh, a Kaiju King in there, maybe like a, you know, a baby cyber Kong. Um, you know, there's going to be some really cool stuff in there. And um, those, because like, I think the uh, box like those other NFT, you're going to like bought this with the, like, I guess a community wallet, right? Yeah, exactly. So, yep. So part, part, part of the mid funds are going to be going to that as well as, um, half of all secondary royalties go to a community wallet that kind of, you know, um, provides, uh, you know, bread mart, mm -hmm. uh, funds. And, um, also, uh, we're going to have a, a portion of that community wallet, um, buying yeah. bread off the, off the decks and, um, burning it. It's so. like, I feel like the, the, what's really important with like making like a play to earn game and stuff like that. It's like the token needs to have a bunch of ways to like liquidate it. Like, you know what I mean? Like you can't just have only two things where it's like, okay, you produce and then liquidate it on the decks, like a, like raid party in my, for example, like, I feel like it's a good project. It's just like, I don't really see it um, doing well, like long, long term, since like all you can really do is like you're staking your fighter. You're not really you, you have a hero. You're staking your fighter. You're producing tokens, mm -hmm. and then all yeah. you can really do is just use the tokens to either maybe summon a new fighter. I mean, I know there's some other stuff, some other small things you can do. Yeah, you can summon a fighter and summon fighters, fighters, and fighters, like, fighters. Yeah, and then which enhancing fighters leads to more tokens which leads to okay now i have more tokens what do i do with these tokens now after i've enhanced right. these yeah fighters? it's just you know what you do you take it and you sell it on the decks for actual money which is going to cause it to dump that's the problem here i feel like the best way is making it from going from bread to spells going from bread to potions, nfts bread to, to bread, to bread, bread to to potions NFTs. yeah exactly bread to like and we're coming up with like in with boxes too the crazy thing is with that is like you can do so much with it it's just like so much you can do it's just, we're, we're thinking of a lot of crazy ideas that we're trying to innovate the space and trying to find different ways where you can liquidate bread instead of just going to the decks right. just, you know what i mean selling that for ETH. yeah because like at the end of the day like if you look at like so, like something stable like the us dollar um you know the reason why the us dollar is stable is because you know you can go to starbucks you can buy a coffee you can go to you know uh mcdonald's and buy a burger uh you can go to best buy and buy a computer right there's just so much you know liquidity for that dollar to the point where you know, people care about it because, you know, they need it to do, to do all the things that they want to do. I think it. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So, so, you know, obviously, you know, we're not going to be, it wouldn't be sustainable to, you know, basically make a currency like that, that completely wouldn't be sustainable. But, you know, we're, we're looking at, you know, ways of providing that token liquidity creatively and, in, you know, innovating on kind of what other play to earns have done. You know, we're, we're in a, in a privileged position to the point where we can kind of kind of step back, you know, because we haven't launched our game yet. So we're able to kind of see yeah. what these projects did well, what these projects didn't do well, you know, and kind of combine, uh, you know, our, our own kind yeah. of spin on it to, to create something new. And I just want to say this as well. Yeah. This like what's really important about this, too, is like this cannot be done. I feel like by yourself. I feel like another way where it's like then when you integrate other communities with their token and our token is where then it starts getting a lot easier to find different ways to liquidate things. Cause it's like, you can do only so much with your own community and your own yeah, and things like that. Like thing. you can do a lot. Like right now what we're trying to do is we're trying to do a lot of things with the boxes and a lot of things with like bread mart, things like that. But it's like, eventually it's gonna have to get to a point where it's like, you have to bring in other communities to expand it. Right. To expand the currency and expand the token. Right. And then, then there's gonna be a lot of different ways where you can do stuff. Yeah. It's like, and, and that's kind of, you know, going on to like the last section here, like the long-term goals, you know, is gonna be, 
integrating other communities, like, you know, basically bringing other communities into our ecosystem and then, you know, also bringing our, you know, NFTs and community into their ecosystem just to per like further provide, you know, utility for, for everybody involved. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's really important. Um, and, you know, another thing cool that like we kind of just thought about a couple days ago um, for you guys in here, it's kind of you know, a little bit, a little bit of, of uh, some alpha um, is, you know, potentially doing like seasonal spells and potions. So, you know, like I said earlier, with these spells and potions out of the box, you can actually mint them as ERC 1155s or use them in your in-game inventory like free of gas. Um, so, you know, as far as if you were to if we were to take the, let's say, season one spells out of the box, season one potions out of the box, those can no, no longer be bait. Like the, the, the supply is capped at that point. Supply is completely capped. And then we introduce new spells, new potions that completely change the meta. Right. And we're, not only does that make the game better, but it also, you know, benefits investors and benefits players because, you know, now all of a sudden there's only an only X amount of this spell, you know, and let's say that spell is really good in like the next meta, you know, that spell is going to be worth a lot of money because there's at that point a cap supply. So, you know, that's just another kind of really cool idea that we thought about. Um, you know, the thing about us is like, we're always just sitting in like we're always just like hanging out just coming up with crazy ideas um and then sometimes they work sometimes they don't but you know we're always spitballing crazy ideas and you know it's kind of i think where where this whole ecosystem it's, it's kind of came just, from yeah it's just like taking the extra step thinking outside the box is what really like kind of helped us is like you know what i mean so it's like there's a lot of like about this game it's like i don't really see a lot of other games like this um other projects i feel yeah. like they just kind of go more of like the simple staking route we kind of just wanted to go where it's like like a lot of strategy like our oh, game yeah. our game is essentially like you're making you're making choices based on limited resources right so you have limited amount of tokens and you have to decide you know how much you want to allocate to offense and how much you want to allocate to defense because you know if you want to go full offense and just try and steal a bunch of tokens and you know make a big bag then you know you're potentially going to be left vulnerable and you know you never know but, like yeah. the hypnosis spell is always out there you more, might yeah. potentially have a yeah. Yeah. right so it's kind of like you know balancing that that offense and defense potentially you know if you're more risk averse you you spend a lot more bread on potions and you know just go to the back bay for the higher yield or if you want to go full offense just you know let it rip for a full week you yeah. go full offense and try and steal as many tokens as you can so yeah. you know we worked really hard on these mechanics to make it so that like there's and there's so many variables to the point where it's just it just leaves so many opportunities for different strategies um which i'm super excited to see like how how people are gonna be playing the game um so yeah i don't know do you have something you wanted to add or um i was just gonna say like think about it like with, with fortnite right what really gives incentive to like uh for like new players or other players to play the game well there's something called there's in their shop like either every week I like I know they add new skins new gun skins new guns mm -hmm. maybe sometimes every month that's what people like yeah when exactly. people want to go to the shop be like no way ten hours left until the new skin drops or the new gun drops it's kind of like that's what we would be kind of thinking about with the seasonal right, spells right. it's like hey guys three more days until the new seasonal spells come out come out and the old ones are gonna be completely cut off. completely gone yeah only way you can get them is you know on OPC. exactly it kind of get, um, brings incentive yeah to demand and, and, and it changes the game as well because the spells are going to be different right exactly so and you know like i think part of the reason like you know obviously like when fortnite first came out the reason why because it's just it's the reason i'm bringing that up is because it's an example of you know if you're very proactive with you know uh creating something it, it can really blow up quick and so you know, Fortnite was able to put out new updates every single week. Like there was a new gun, a new item, a new mechanic every single week, right? Not saying that would necessarily be possible for us, but like the frequency of updates is something that we're going to be taking seriously. You know, adding, frequently adding new stuff, you know, new opportunities for, you know, to spend bread, new opportunities to, you know, earn bread, new opportunities, new opportunities to, you know, strategically use bread. Um, our token is kind of, you know, the, is going to be like next steps. Like, you know, I, by any means, like the game, like where it is now is is really only the tip of the iceberg of like what we have planned for this project. But, you know, we, we yeah, <laughs> I could talk for hours, but, you know, <laughs> I'm down to open it up. And uh, do you have questions. like uh, an inside of like the the CD club, the Cure Dex club? Oh, yeah, 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 absolutely. So, yeah, so kind of like, you know, continuing on um, with, you know, our roadmap post game. Um, you know, we're going to have that Cured Ducks Club uh, late quarter two of 2022 is kind of when that's slated to come out. Um, so, you know, this is kind of going to kind of be like a social area. Um, we're potentially looking at adding like a casino in there. 
Um, we're going to have poker and then we're also going to have like a bar offering strange drinks. Um, this is going to, you know, we, we have some pretty nutty ideas cooked up for this. Um, so, you know, we'll, we'll see how, uh, how that comes out. Um, and then for quarter three, we have uh, age of industry. So this is going to come in with bakeries, factories and Ducky Wall Street. Um, you know, again, just adding more ways to strategically use bread, more ways to kind of, you know, uh, just, just basically offering just completely new ways of interacting with our ecosystem. Um, and I think Ducky Wall Street is going to be something that's really dope. Um, like I said, I mean, I traded for about a year and a half. Um, so I have some some pretty good understanding of markets and, you know, different, uh, you know, financial instruments that we could potentially employ in our ecosystem. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be I'm super excited for the future. But that's kind of like a little sneak peek of, you know, what what we got uh, coming later for sure. That's uh, nice. Excited to that. And then, yeah, like uh, also I saw on the website, uh, the Q3 age of industry, like with the banking yep. system. Uh, any words yeah. That? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that's going to be like our age of industry. So, you know, bakeries, factories, um, Ducky Wall Street, um, you know, kind of just what like what I was saying about, uh, you know, it's just going to be more ways of like strategically using bread. Um, and so, you know, it's going to just yeah. So we're just looking to, you know, expand the ecosystem to more of like a whole world, right? Like it's like, you know, there's not just going to be like the game, right? It's not just like Hypnoducks is the game and that's it. Like it's going to be like Hypnoducks is like this whole world of like, you know, you can do this, you can do that, you can do this with your bread, you can make bread this way, you know, oh, that this is a new new thing I figured out that you can do to make more bread. It's kind of like, you know, we want to always have that that new strategy and kind of like, you know, almost like, like almost like there's something new coming and it's like everyone's excited, um, you know, just kind of keeping, keeping that, keeping that alive. Um, and then just like, you know, thinking long, long term into the future. Um, I think, you know, I don't know personally, uh, you know, when the, uh, you know, because I think right now where we are with NFTs is kind of, you know, it's obviously extremely early. Um, and, you know, as far as us, like we're very interested in kind of, you know, expanding the brand and kind of positioning ourselves mm -hmm. like for the long term of Web3. Um, so, you know, something that we're going to be looking at. Um, you know, as well as, you know, continuing our ecosystem and everything like that is actually launching like some sort of Web3 startup um, that's kind of tied in with, you know, our, our uh, NFTs and our community um, to kind of, you know, establish our brand equity and brand identity in this, you know, exponentially growing space, um, which, you know, I think is the key to kind of long term success. Uh, and when I say long term, I'm talking about, you know, five, 10 years potentially. Um, and, you know, again, like with this, you know, venture that we decide to kind of take on, um, it would be, you know, some sort of service or product or, you know, technology in blockchain that, um, you know, potentially would solve an issue uh, that we see. Um, and, you know, again, like that would be something where we would, you know, be delivering, like kicking back value to like, you know, think about like a company, like a startup company with stock, right? Like our, our the, the, the tokens, like our, our NFTs would be almost like the stock, right? So it would be like, yes. there would be kickbacks and that type of thing. Cause, you know, I think, some founders can be a bit short-sighted. Um, you know, I'm not trying to like throw shade or anything, but I just think it's important to always think like long, long-term, right? Like, because in, in a time right where we live in right now, where, you know, we're so early to such a, you know, revolutionary technology, like there, someone's building the new, the next Amazon right now, someone's building the next Google, right? So it's like, you know, if you can position yourself um, and kind of, you know, take advantage of the time we're living in and also, you know, deliver value to first investors and, and your community. Um, I think that's really where, you know, the long-term identity and brand of, of, uh, you know, Hypnoducks, uh, will, will, will go. So, yeah. Nice. Uh, very great, like a clear and neat explanation of the project. Um, I see Susan asking, is the Discord closed because you, like on the project collab form, you, you like you fill in. I think you gave us a Discord link that was like maybe good for one week or the day. But I don't know if your Discord is closed right oh, now. Oh yeah, one second. Let me, uh, let me generate a new link for you guys. One second. I'll yeah. post it in here. Here you guys. So guys in the, like agent in the chat, you can go into the... Uh, thread of Hypnodux and you can join the their discord cool, cool. Let me but yeah we can definitely kind of open it up for, for uh, some questions here for sure yep guys don't be shy no i kind of just like 
You yeah, I kind like of just talk. Like, like, I, I had like uh, a lot of questions prepared, and you <laughs> basically cover it throughout while speaking. So, I mean, if you're like used okay, to cool. do emails, uh, I think your uh, elevator speech is going <laughs> more and more yeah, and precise. No, yeah, it's uh, you know, that's like the one thing too. Like, I think marketing in this space is there. There's kind of like a, I don't want to say like weird kind of. I think I think it's a bit weird to be honest. Like it's kind of a there's a thin line to walk, um, you know. And I think AMAs personally are like the best way to kind of you know get your project around because at the end of the day, it's like I, I think you know if if I'm talking to you know potential like investors in my project, mm -hmm. like I want I want them to hear it from like my voice, right, from the founder. Yeah. Um, I think it's really important because it's like you know I'm sitting here and I'm just straight up telling you guys like this is what I'm building. You know, if it sounds cool, check it out. You know, if you want to buy in, buy in. Um, and I think, you know, AMAs are like, that's what we've been doing. We do, we have multiple AMAs like pretty much every day. Um, yeah, we got one this morning at 9 a.m. In, uh, in the space right now, I mean, if you want to like uh, value your project to the right people, that's, uh, that's the way to go. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, like we had an AMA this morning at uh, 9 a.m. Um, we have this one now and we have another one after this with uh, the Ape List. Mm -hmm. um so you know it's just it, i think it's the best way to really just like spread your project and kind of you know just give people like a good uh also introduction to the founder you know i think it's like sometimes i don't know i just think i, I think the founder has like a responsibility at least this is what i feel like for myself like i definitely feel like i have a responsibility to kind of you know be as you know communicative and direct with you know with you know my community and just all you guys as i can so i think you know amas are, are super cool for that type of thing um but yep, yeah this let's is definitely the, the way to go uh, i see yeah. dad uh, asking anyway you could spare some whitelist for people here in the ama i could offer dad jokes in exchange <laughs> all right let's hear let's hear a dad joke let's hear let's hear your most fire dad joke and i'll, I'll give you whitelist what's up <laughs> yo 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 <laughs> what's uh, going well, on what do you do most talk lifts uh where Wait, what'd you say? The, where are the most of the ducks living? Where are the most of the ducks living? Yeah, where do most <laughs> ducks live? In the park. In the, uh, in the swamp. In Dakota. In Dakota. You said in Dakota. In Dakota? Dakota. Dakota. Oh, my fucking God. Dakota. Oh, Dakota. All right, y'all. I'm going to give you whitelist for that for sure. <laughs> Just hop, hop in the server and open a ticket, and I'll, I'll sort you out after the event. <laughs> I have another one. What what stories do um old ducks tell young ducklings? What stories do old ducks tell young ducklings? Duck tales. Uh, duck tales, yeah. That's I it was something with tails for sure. <laughs> that's good stuff. This is our dead, guys. <laughs> yeah, the secret to whitelist is making uh making me and Dimitri laugh. Laughs. <laughs> Um, yeah, but like, honestly, I'd, I'd just be interested to hear like your guys thoughts. Like if you just want to either like come up and talk or type in the chat, like what, what do you, what do you guys think about kind of like what we're doing? Um, I'm always uh, interested to hear like feedback and kind of sounded really interesting. Just watch out that you don't fuck your um, balance of the game rather too quickly with a balance change. Oh yeah. Wait, what do you mean balance change? Uh, since oh, you're when you want to implement a new like, spell that could change the right, header right. in one day, just watch out. Like, give people some time. Like, if you look at all like major companies or like major video games, every every time somebody happens within a day and somebody just becomes something just becomes busted, people are pissed. And this is just yeah. a spare time. If we have money involved, this is just gonna piss off even more people. Yeah, that that's sense. a great point. Yeah, 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 great point, great point. I'm, I'm all for balance, and I'm all for changing metas, dude. I play, uh, I play card games, I play video games. I love that shit, but just watch out. Yeah, yeah, good point, good point. Yeah, no, that's that's yeah. I mean, especially now that you know, there's people's like money involved and shit. Yeah, that's a really good point. It, we we would have to like kind of like announce a lot all of these things like ahead of time. Oh yeah, no, it would kind of just like yeah, give people an like, idea of like, like what would be coming out in a way, but like also keep stuff under wraps. But at yeah. the same time, it would kind of like be like it would kind of let people know because if they have if they have shit staked in the back bay or they have shit staked in like safety or wherever, you know what I mean? And we just drop like completely twist the game. It's like hold the fuck. Yeah, we would have to be you know yeah, I mean? it's, it's confusing. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, that's a good I, point. I man. used to be in Axie, and that's what happened once or twice with like balance changes. Where you, in Axie, I don't know if you're familiar with Axie. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Axie. Uh, did you, have Have you ever done breeding? 
Um, no, but I kind of know how it works. I think. So the way it worked is right. Uh, you breed something and it takes five day uh, five days to breed uh, to hatch, right? And sometimes uh, you knew the patch was coming, but we never knew when. So you might have just spent, let's say, 0 0.3, 0 0.4 to make new eggs, right? Next day, balance changes comes, and your eggs are pretty much worthless. Like prices no cut way. in half. Prices cut in half because your cards or your, like your build just got nerfed. So that's something you just have to watch out for. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a great point. Okay, good to know. Yeah, damn. Cool, cool. Any other questions, yeah, guys? They're shy today, but no, I think like the the way you explain everything uh, was uh, super clear, at least in my uh, my opinion. Oh, I see someone uh, raising the hand. Late gen, the stage is yours. Hey, what's going on, guys? Uh, thanks hey, so much, hey. for uh, making time for the AMA. Really do appreciate you being thorough. Uh, yeah, no, absolutely. For you here. Cool. What do you call two ducks and a cow? <laughs> <laughs> two ducks and a two ducks and a cow. Uh, wait. I, I, don't I know. literally just don't fucking. Know. Yeah, that that's a tough one, honestly. Quackers and milk. Quackers and milk. <laughs> No way. All right, yo, open a ticket in the Discord. I'll give you a whitelist for that. Guys, <laughs> yeah, I got one more for you here. Why did the duck right. get arrested? Why did the duck get arrested? Um, <laughs> I don't know. I'm bad with these jokes, man. For selling quack. For selling quack. Ha <laughs> ha. Damn, dude, this is like the dad joke server. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> We're spreading slowly. Cool, cool, cool. Um, let's see. Oh, I don't see any other questions. Uh, shit, I need a dad joke for a whitelist. Sure do, or I mean, you can... Uh, soggy, for the whitelist market. Uh, I think the question is incoming. Would you do anything different than others? I'm a huge fan of this question because yes. Um, so essentially like what we want to do with this like whitelist market and that type of thing um, is kind of use our box mechanic um, with that. So, you know, with what we're going to be doing for this bread mart is we're going to have these boxes available in the bread mart and, you know, they, they might be different boxes, you know, every two weeks or every month or something like that. We're going to be changing up the boxes, but, you know, essentially like with those boxes, we're going to be putting, uh, you know, NFTs, whitelist. Uh, you know, physical items, like we might put some ledgers in there. Um, so it's going to be kind of a situation where it's like, you know, you, you spin the box and you have a, a chance to get, you know, you have to pay, obviously pay the utility, the bread. Um, but, you know, you might have a chance to get uh, nothing or you might have a chance to get, you know, a, a whitelist for this project, whitelist for that project. Maybe you get a ledger, uh, you know, maybe you get, let's say, a, a raid party fighter or a cyber Kong or, you know, a Zen ape or a Disto ape. I don't know. It's basically going to be similar to that box mechanic where, you know, we'll have, you know, that jackpot prize of like the big nft like a cyber kong or something like that and then you know we would have like some maybe mid or mid more mid-tier nfts uh you know some whitelists some physical items um so it'd be a whole bunch of different stuff because i think like adding that box mechanic makes it like a lot more entertaining a lot more fun um and it also kind of you know allows for uh you know a little bit more of like that of like combating whales um you know i, I know typically like with some of these whitelist markets it's like if you if you're a small fish in the ecosystem, like it's really hard to kind of get value out of it. Um, so that's going to be kind of one way that we're trying to even the playing field a little bit more. Exactly, markets markets are basically for whales. That that's the thing that we really 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 wanted to combat here. Um, so yeah, really appreciate that question, man. Great stuff. I don't see anyone typing or uh, like. That's cool. I I'd say for the to come up on stage uh, for a question, guys, because it's gonna be almost an hour. And uh, you say you have another AMA right after this one? Yeah, we got a AMA in about an hour and a half. Um, but yeah, I mean, I guess like closing words. Um, you know, appreciate you guys for having us. Um, again, definitely like go check out website. Go check out you know the OpenSea. Come hang out in the Discord. 
Um, you know, Genesis is going to be, uh, I don't want to like leak too much, but in the, in the game mechanics, Genesis is going to be like definitely very, very, very good. Um, you know, I'll tell you like, like I've been working on the mechanics with uh, our developer and our tokenomics advisor. Um, and it's like literally every time after we finish a session with the mechanics, like we all just go buy more ducks because it's just like after working through mechanics, it's just like, Oh my God, like these things are going to be nasty. So I have like nine ducks right now. That's like my entire net worth at the moment is like Genesis hypno ducks. Um, so yeah, definitely go check out the uh, website, um, check out the mechanics, you know, give it a, give it a read. Um, but you know, yeah, come hang out on the discord and, uh, appreciate you guys for, uh, having us the great time. It was a pleasure for having you and thanks uh, also for being there. Absolutely. Cool. Um, yeah, well, uh, I'll uh, hit you in the DMs. I think we have some uh, whitelist spots for uh, for you guys, um, yep. Discord and stuff like that you can give out. And um, yeah, thanks again. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great day, night, right. afternoon. See ya. Yeah, peace out, guys.